this is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Honda made some really impressive gains in manufacturing efficiency last fiscal year, and it's poised to keep the momentum going. It says the break-even point for production capacity improved from about 90% to roughly 80%, which means it can build 10% fewer cars and still make the same amount of money. Honda's also accelerating the standardization of its ICE lineups and powertrain options and says it will migrate nameplates like CRV and Accord to a new modular platform that supports both ICE and hybrid setups. But to keep them competitive, they will get the same or similar state-of-the-art features as EVs, including advanced safety tech. Speaking of Honda's EVs, It's launching the ENY1 in Europe very soon, as well as several EVs in China, an electric K-Van in Japan, and the Prologue and the Acura ZDX in North America next year. Those last two are from its partnership with GM, and Honda says collaboration on EVs is essential to its future, and it's trying to make it easier within the company to work with others. Areas it plans to partner up include charging technology, software, digital services, and batteries. The EVs it starts launching in North America in 2025, which will be built on a new dedicated EV platform from Honda, will be the first to feature its new operating system. By 2030, Honda thinks about 40% of its total sales will be electric and fuel cell vehicles, and after plant retoolings, it will make 2 million EVs a year by the same time. By 2040, it expects 100% of its sales to be EVs and fuel cells. To help realize those goals, Honda is bringing its EV operations together more, establishing the electrification business development operations, and it hopes to be completely self-sufficient in the EV business by 2030. Rental car company Hertz is pulling back on its EV expansion. It no longer plans for a quarter of its fleet to be EVs by the end of next year and has slowed down the pace at which it's adding EVs. Hertz previously said it would buy 100,000 Teslas and 175,000 EVs from GM, but right now it only has about 50,000 EVs in its fleet, 80% of which are Teslas. To be fair, It says it's still committed to buying the remaining EVs, just not as quickly. One of the more interesting reasons for the EV pullback is higher than expected repair costs. It's not general maintenance stuff, that's still cheaper for EVs. It's the collision and damage repair costs, which Hertz says can often be double what the same repair would be on an ICE car. The other main reason for the EV pullback is lowering residual values. Since 80% of its EV fleet are Teslas, and Tesla has been the most aggressive with price cuts, the value of its EV fleet has gone down considerably. The UAW and Unifor strikes cost Stellantis more than $3 billion in revenue, but the company says it was the least affected of the Detroit automakers and the strikes only cut $795 million from its operating profits. The automaker sold 1.48 million vehicles globally in the third quarter, up 11% from a year ago, and its BEV sales were up 37%. That helped boost its revenue 7% to nearly $48 billion in Q3. And despite the dent the strikes put in its revenue, Stellantis maintained its full-year guidance for a double-digit margin on its operating profit. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Mercedes isn't just bringing AI into its cars. It's also applying the tech inside the company. Mercedes is launching a chat GPT function for employees so they can work more efficiently. For example, it says they could use it to help make emails, reports, and other work documents, or even summarize longer texts. It will first be available in English and German, 
and Mercedes says most of its workforce will be able to use the chat GPT feature by the end of the year. Ryzen, which is the new division formed by Daimler Truck to sell all electric class four and five trucks in the US, has achieved full homologation for the market. That's one of the last steps before it can start selling its trucks, which are really just rebadged versions of the Fuso Ecanter, another brand owned by Daimler Truck. They will offer lithium iron phosphate or LFP batteries in two sizes that provide between 110 and 160 miles of range. Ryzen trucks will be sold exclusively through the Velocity Group, which has about 80 stores worldwide. Toyota is significantly boosting its investment in EV battery production in the U.S. The automaker is investing an additional $8 billion to build more batteries at a new factory in North Carolina. That brings the total investment to $13.9 billion, which will create 5,000 new jobs. Toyota is adding an additional 8 BEV and PHEV battery production lines to the two that were previously announced. Production is expected to start in 2025, and it will eventually build up to a capacity of 30 gigawatt hours a year by 2030. Ford is expanding the number of Tesla superchargers its customers will have access to in North America. It was originally 12,000 superchargers, but Ford increased that to more than 15,000. Ford EV customers will gain access to the superchargers next year, but no pricing has been announced yet. Ford also revealed that it has added three more charging providers to its Blue Oval charging network in North America, Francis Energy, Blink, and Red E. They'll add 10,000 more chargers to the network, which puts its total at more than 106,000, including 11,800 fast chargers. Geely and Chinese tech company Baidu unveiled the first vehicle from their new joint venture. It's an electric crossover called the GUE-01. What's unique about this vehicle is it's equipped with Baidu's Apollo Autonomous Platform. The system features 11 HD cameras, 12 ultrasonic radars, and 5 millimeter wave radars. It's capable of point-to-point -point navigation, auto lane changes, and handling highway on and off ramp maneuvers. There are two battery sizes available, a 71.4 kilowatt hour pack that provides 550 kilometers or 342 miles of range and a 100 kilowatt hour pack that provides 720 kilometers or 447 miles of range. Both of those numbers are based on the Chinese test cycle. And despite all the tech, the model is relatively affordable, with a starting price around $35,000. I've had a couple of sightings in the Detroit area recently that you might be interested in. First, I've seen several versions of the new Oshkosh mail truck driving around town. Yes, it looks just like it does in the pictures, but it's nice to see them moving around on their own power. Last year, I saw one on the back of a flatbed, and it was a very early prototype. I could even see a bare piece of 2x4 being used to support the front fender. But with driving examples, Oshkosh might be on track to hit its delivery start in June of next year. The other vehicle I've seen several times now is the Ford Edge L, which is only available in China. We have no news to report on this, but it is interesting to see that vehicle being tested in the U.S. For reference, the Edge L is a three-row SUV with a two-liter EcoBoost engine that's available as gas only or hybrid. But that brings us to the end of today's show. Thanks for making AutoLine a part of your day. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. Borg Warner, propulsion solutions that support a clean, energy-efficient world. And by Scheffler, we pioneer motion. At Scheffler, we pioneer motion. Electrifying mobility, 
manufacturing smarter, reducing CO2 emissions, making energy production clean. Scheffler pioneers motion to advance how the world moves.